Good Wednesday morning. Team USA took care of business yesterday, which was awesome to see as they move on. They beat Iran. We've got a basketball team that looks good every now and again. Last night was one of those nights that the Knicks looked great. Of course, this is a huge football week for both the Jets and the Giants. Peter Schwartz is here this morning. He got ranch dumped all over him last night. So you got what? He got ranch dumped all over him. You mean and ranch dressing? Ranch dressing okay. dumped all over him last night. So right. we'll have to uh, talk to him about that a little bit later. I know you had issues at the coffee machine. It's I've, be I've a- already had uh, issues this morning. It's amazing. Right. You know, you try to get, you know... Geared up for the show, you try. And good morning, by the yeah, way. Yeah, good morning, Boomer. Yeah, you try to get you know ready for the show. You and I are getting our makeup done. We're talking. We're having a you know, nice conversation. I figure I better go back there and go get my Dunkin' coffee before the show starts. I go back there; it's not made yet, so yeah. I have to make it, and I don't mind making it. It's sure. fine. It's all good. Yep. So, and I, I'm a pretty good coffee maker myself. I kind of feel that way about yeah. myself. So, you know, I'm making the coffee, and uh, I'm cleaning my cup, as you can see right here. Yep, the Dunkin' Cup. The Dunkin' Cup. So I'm cleaning my cup and everything else. And then uh, somebody sneaks in behind me and goes to the coffee uh, maker before I even get a chance to go get the coffee. So you're the guy who's making the coffee. That person should wait for you to get the coffee first, and they just they jumped you right over. A little jumper action. I mean, it it, it was a little rude, actually. Was it a, hey, Boomer, how are you? You mind if I get some coffee? No, it was Nothing. just right, went right in behind. Now, I didn't, I normally, you know, I, I know when people are around me, I didn't yeah. feel this guy. You didn't even feel I him. I didn't feel the guy, you know, and I'm like, man, this is uh, this is a little crazy what's going on. Hey, can you go get EJ for a second? EJ was the guy. Yeah, EJ was the guy. Like he had no awareness about him, no nothing. Wow, not even a hello, Boomer. Good not morning. even hey, good morning, Boomer. How are you doing? I'm like just went right in behind me to go get the coffee. Wow. Now I, so I don't know whether or not to be mad or not, but I wasn't really mad. But I was just like you know, annoying. Common courtesy, man. Right. A little, know? a little annoyance. It is like the Christmas season and everything. Right. Now I, I would have thought if he would have said hello, good morning, Boomer, and then got his coffee, not knowing you had made the coffee, that would have been fine. But for him just to sneak. Right in behind you and not say a word is yeah. is an issue. That's definitely an issue. He's actually on the board for the DA show oh, right now. Okay. Oh, he is. All right. Did so you, you did you tell him what the problem was? No, because when I walked by, he was talking on the mic. Oh, he was. He's okay. Like, kind of like you're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. He's probably like, I just punked that boomer. So yeah, I'm exactly telling you, I, what I, he that's did. how I felt. I felt yeah. like I was just got, you know, dicked in the drive through. That's what it felt like. <laughs> You know, did you ever, you ever get a long drive through lane and then you get up there and they give you the wrong stuff and then you pull away and you're like, you realize, man, you don't got your two cheeseburgers? I'm like, <laughs> what the hell was that? Yeah, um, that I, that has not happened before to yeah, me. Has never happened to you? Where it got the wrong stuff? Did you ever get screwed in the old easy pass lane? Yes, I've gotten Where screwed Where you get with stuck that. with somebody, like it's throws fun. cars in every freaking lane right, and you're yeah. behind the like, one car that doesn't have their easy pass or it doesn't work or they don't even know that they need an easy pass because there was no toll taker at the time. <laughs> right. That's I, how I felt this morning. No, I know. I don't, I don't blame you. It's not a great start. It's definitely not a great start to the morning. You know what? We, we got to get this. We got to get the show on, you know, cranking again and, and get it going. You know, I, I heard a little bit of the this uh, pregame show this morning or the, the warm-up, warm-up show. show. Yes, the warm-up and show. And I have to tell you, this, this Peter Schwartz is fascinating. <laughs> that, he is a fascinating human being. <laughs> I know. I've been trying to tell you for the longest time that this man, like, if once you start peeling away the layers, you're finding the most interesting man in the world. I mean, I'm I, telling you. I don't know what it is, but now all of a sudden you're telling me he had ranch dressing poured on him at Miller's Ale House. <laughs> is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Miller's Ale House is a, is a great place. Yeah I, yeah, I actually know one of the guys who owns a couple franchises on Long Island. I've fished with him before. I so didn't I was, realize it was a franchise. I thought it was a local thing. I, you no. know, I've, been, I've been in there before. and There's a number of and, them, yeah. And let me just tell you, when I go in there, mm-hmm. when I've been in there, yeah. They don't know it's me. They don't know I'm working here. They don't know that. You yeah. know, it's just it's a nice waitress or waiter that's handling my table. Yep. And they treat me with respect. Nobody's dumping ranch dressing on me. I can yeah. tell you that. So I will get the full story from okay. him, but he apparently has had several issues with this one location. So much so that the manager came over unprovoked. It's not like Peter asked for the manager. The manager came over and said this seems to be a recurring thing with you guys. Oh, oh, oh wow! What can we do to actually make you happy? And he was, really he was, was aggressive probably, with probably him. Probably wants free food. Well, he got. I think he got it last night because it sounds like he got up and left. 
didn't even pay the bill after the issues. I mean, I thought that I I think the place is really good. So, yeah, I've um, I've never had it. I've been know, there several times. A, and take a family there. I can understand that. You know, it's reasonably priced. It's good food. It's yeah. exactly what you think it is. I have gone there. You know, it's a great time to go to Miller's Ale House for like the uh, the NCAA tournament. You got all the TVs up yes. there and everything. You get the appetizers, everything else. It's perfect. So it's a shame to hear that. And apparently the head of the Levittown Chamber of Commerce has reached out to Peter privately to see if he could figure something out between Miller's Ale House and the Schwartz family. Yeah, and just so you know, I, I, I have Levittown in my blood. Oh, I know. Yeah, because my grandparents lived in Levittown. I remember, I spent yeah. a lot of time off of 28S out there on the Southern State Parkway, Wantaw Parkway. That's right. Or Wantaw, Wantaw Avenue. Wantaw. You know, Wantaw. Yeah, so I, you know, I get that in my blood, and when I saw that, I was not very happy with Peter. Yeah, well, because you know, it's not worth it going like you're a celebrity, and now you're going public that you're all of a sudden ticked off because you didn't get what you thought you should have gotten, right. or you got some ranch dressing dumped on you. Right. The way he made it sound like he's like. It's not like the waitress came over and dumped it on his head. Well, that's what it sounded like in the warm-up show as well, that almost she did it intentionally. I would not be surprised now that I hear that there was previous incidents with this Miller's Ale House and Peter that this manager told the waitress to dump the rest. So, you, you, so you're thinking this is a Schwartz problem. I think that the, the manager was here like, comes listen. the Schwartz family, dump the ranch dressing. <laughs> like the manager said, hey, here comes the Schwartz family again. Dump ranch dressing all over them so we never see them again. Like, right. That's what I think happened. So this has been a crazy, already a crazy morning, a yep. crazy day, and, and we got Peter to talk to a little bit later on. But I'll tell you, the more and more I think about what's what's happening, I, I was trying to think about the last time the Giants had a game this big, this late in the year, and obviously that would be the boat year, the, uh, the oh, playoff sure. boat year. Yep. And um, this, is a, this, is, this is huge for them. And it looks like they're going to get some guys back, which is really good. And they're going to be playing against the team. While they have been winning, it hasn't been pretty. Like, it's been a grind for the Washington Commanders. Yeah, and they haven't played great teams either outside of the Eagles. They beat the Eagles, but, you know, some of these other games, they were supposed to win. Quite well, that was it. That was a pretty impressive win. You know, they ran the ball. They held the ball. Right. They didn't turn the ball over, that kind of thing. It was one of those games where, you know, the Eagles, I, they probably, I don't want to say they mailed it in, but I think that they had injuries on the defensive line. It showed itself, and then all of a sudden, when you when you get a team like Washington or the Giants, teams that are trying to get where the Eagles are, and you give them a little bit of breathing room in a game, then all of a sudden the confidence comes back, and then you can kind of feel like you got this. You can beat these guys. Yeah. Uh, so they're a good team. Uh, they're not a great team, but I think for the Giants and the Giants fans, you know, this is like one of those, uh, I said, crossroads moments for the, the Rangers the other night, which is really disappointing. And the reason it was crossroads is because you're playing one of the better teams in the league. It's one of your rivals who hasn't, who haven't been good for the last seven, eight, nine years. And now all of a sudden they come in and they beat your ass on your home ice. You know, that, that is, that is, that's why it's a crossroads because now everybody's got to look at themselves and say, you know, what do we need to do better in order to win? And that's where the Giants are, I think, because the Giants have had a nice little flow here. They've lost two in a row, but they're still very much in the mix. And this is a team that reflects who they are, and that's why you have to win this home game. You you cannot sit back. You cannot. You got to go out there and you got to play your ass off. And and for me, it's also kind of like this is like the Daniel Jones moment. Yeah, this is where he's going to make a lot of money or not. I mean, I think that he's going to have a job next year in the NFL, obviously, but at what team, what price, you know, is he going to be a starter? All those things are going to be determined over the next couple of games. And Saquon Barkley as well. Now, I mean, he does not look the same as he did early on in the season. Uh, Daniel Jones was even asked about that yesterday. Is Saquon the same guy? Is he is he healthy? All of this. He goes, oh, yeah, no, he's he's great still. I'm excited to see him. On Sunday, but that's been a, a big difference between the Giants early on in the season and the Giants now is that Saquon Barkley the last couple of games has been in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s with rushing yards as opposed to, you know, leading the league with like 150 scrimmage yards like he was when the Giants were winning. So this is why teams want three running backs. And I know that they they have some other guys, but, you know, he's so much better than them when he is healthy. Yeah. It's impossible for a running back to make it through an entire 17-game season without having something nagging at them if they're playing. You know, a lot of times guys won't play because the coaches won't let them play or the sure. uh, the trainers won't let them play because they're just not right. And whether it be a shoulder, whether it be a thigh, you know, it could be anything. These guys, you know, have the hardest job in sports. I don't care what anybody says. 
you know, taking a football in an NFL game and running it 25 times is a beast. It is a beast. And that's why, like for me, for my money, Saquon, somewhere between 15 and 20 times running with it and five or six times catching it is like the premium, the, What is what I would want. I don't want him touching the ball 35 times a game. I don't want Derrick Henry touching the ball 35 sure. times a game. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's a 17-game season, and if they do make the playoffs, you need all hands on deck, and you need a healthy Saquon Barkley. Yeah, and he hasn't looked healthy the last couple of weeks, and he's had a spectacular year overall, and the Giants are going to need him if they're going to make the playoffs. And Giant fans were all pissed off at me again yesterday. It's sort of funny how like the Giant fan base is either they're either gunning for you or they're gunning for me. Uh, they were gunning for you for a while. Why are they gunning for you now? They're gunning for me because I said they weren't going to win a game the rest of the year. Remember that yesterday? I said they're not going to win a game the rest of the year, and I asked you on a scale of 1 to 10 how crazy am I for saying that, and you gave it a 3. So, like, a, a 10 would be the craziest, the 1 would be the least well, crazy. It's not so crazy. It's not so crazy. No. And, oh, by the way, there's a chance that they're not favored in a game the rest of the year. They could be favored in that Indianapolis game, but when we get there, we'll find out because that team is so up and down, hot and cold. I don't know what the hell they are. So by then, you know, they could be favored in that game maybe by three points, something like that, or they could be an underdog like they are against the Washington Commanders if the Indianapolis Colts get hot over the next couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, they're not going to be favored in any of these games. If they're not favored at home against the Commanders, they're not going to be favored on the road against the Commanders. They're not going to be favored in either one of the Philadelphia games. And they're, you know, the the one – they're not going to be favored in Minnesota. So Look, look, they, they've lost three out of their last four. Uh, the most amount of points they scored was against Houston. That was a 24-point outburst. After that, everything else is less than that. They're not – they get they generate very little offense. Uh, as you – if you pointed out about Saquon, it's not just about him. It's, it's not just everything. They, they, the passing game is one of the worst in the league. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's nobody that is uh, scaring anybody on the opposing defense. You know, we talk about the impact that Tyreek Hill has had for the Miami Dolphins. It's obvious. You can see – just what his speed does to everybody else that they're playing against and how everybody else he's playing with benefits, including Tua. Yeah. And, you know, that that's just not who the Giants are. The Giants are so far away from being that. You know, I don't know why Giant fans would even think anything less than what you're saying. I mean, like, you're not trying to say it to, to insult anybody. No. You're just trying to say it because you think that's your opinion and because the proof is in the performance. I mean, they, they lost 27-13 to 13 to Seattle. They won 24 to 16 against Houston. They lost 31 to 18 to Detroit. And then, of course, they lost 28 to 20 with an oh, by the way, touchdown at the end. Right. It was really 13 points. And it was all, all of that happened in the first half before they that just garbage don't score touchdown. They a lot of points. And right. they haven't scored a lot of points. Even when they win, they win 21 20, 19 to 16, uh, 20 to 12. I mean, 27 to 20. I mean, that. I mean, it's crazy. Like, they cannot score more than 24 points. Yeah. I mean, 27 one time. Was that, and it. that was the London game against the Packers. That's right. Yeah. And so that that's the one time that they have scored <clears throat> over 24 points. So, I mean, th- this year, what they've gotten out of it has been gravy. I think they're on the right track. And this is the reason why I think it's, it's just funny to me because all we've said is how great Joe Shane and Brian Dable have been since they've gotten here and how the future is bright for the Giants this particular group that is out here right now in year one I don't think can compete with the best in the NFC now they're still right there and it's ahead of them and they could still make noise they could run the table and shock all of us and then go to the playoffs it's all right in front of them control your own destiny all that stuff I just don't think it's going to happen I just don't think they're that team well they're not that team but this is another thing I if, if Daniel Jones somehow gets this team to the playoffs, I mean, he'll deserve a new contract, and he'll deserve to stay here, and it will probably be on some sort of modified contract. And if I were him, I would stay here too. If I can somehow get this team to the playoffs, look, you know, they have to rebuild around him. And you know, Brandon Bean did this up in uh, Buffalo, and Joe Shane watched it. Yeah. And whether it's Daniel Jones or whether they draft another kid, you know, that that's yet to be seen. But I just. You know, to be realistic about what's going on right now, this is a game, you know, if they lose this game, it's done. They're done. I think they're toast. That That's why this game is so important for them. Yeah, I mean, and there's a reason why they're an underdog at home to the Commanders, and the Commanders are what, six, they've won six out of seven. That's right. I mean, 
And so it's just the, they're going in different directions, and I think that Chase Young is coming back this week, finally. So you would think that he's going to make an impact as well as one of the better edge rushers in football. So it's going to be, we said that the Lions game was important. This one even more important at this point to try to save their season and try to make it to the postseason. All right, Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network. We do have Peter Schwartz with us today as Jerry is down in Miami with Rutgers. 